You know, an intelligent person probably would have broken this up into multiple parts, but Mama didn't raise a quitter, so here we are. Starting us off with proper, we have Shooting Cans. Shooting Cans is a Ground Zero quest. I personally don't have a big problem with Ground Zero. I know there are quite a few people who don't like it. I do find the map quite enjoyable. That being said, this is probably one of my least favorite quests on there, solely due to the fact that, um... It's kind of hard for me to remember where the hell these objectives are, especially since I don't play the map much, because you're not really meant to play the map much, so figuring out where everything is can be a little annoying, at least in the very beginning, but it's it's not a bad quest, pretty easy to complete, it's, it's just good. Uh, immediately following that, we have Debut. Debut can be a frustrating quest when you, I don't know, murder 35 scavs and still haven't found a single MP133, Yes, I am speaking from experience, but overall, it's typically pretty easy to complete. There's no real reason to dread this thing. It's the first. It's one of the first quests in the game. Uh, that's a fine quest. It's uh, going into the good tier. Then we have Luxurious Life, and Luxurious Life is definitely more annoying than the quests that have come before it. W why is an identical- why do I have to search for the single bottle that is identical to literally every other bottle in the liquor store? They couldn't have given it, like, a unique decal or something? Why am I searching for this specific one when there are 50 of them all over the wall? It's kind of stupid. The other issue is, when you are trying to ha do this quest, literally everyone else is trying to do this quest. Meaning that this liquor store turns into a greater hotspot of gang warfare than the entirety of Chicago. So this quest isn't terrible, but it'll probably take multiple attempts and that can be a little frustrating. So that is going to go into the Thug It Out tier. The Bronze Pocket Watch, a Tarkov classic. It's a little annoying now that you have to go to dorms to get the machinery key. It's also very annoying that you can't drop the key to your friends. But overall, not a difficult quest. If you go in a group, you can get it done really quickly for a group of people. Uh, it's a fine, it's, it's a good quest. I don't have too much to complain about. And then there's Search Mission. I don't like Search Mission that much solely because of the fact that you gotta wander all the way into the back corner of woods where there's like literally nothing except for this mission. So that that's a little annoying. You kind of miss the rest of the raid just trying to get this one done. So it's more tedious than anything else. That is going to go into the Thug It Out tier. Shootout Picnic, however, I quite enjoy because of the fact that scavs are freaking everywhere on woods nowadays and you can get this thing done very, very quickly. This wipe, I think I got it done in one raid because I was just getting swarmed and it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it. So, so I dare say that it is an enjoyable quest. Delivery from the past is a very, very easy quest, so long as you have a group of four other people you can join in order to get it done in factory and not have to worry about it. But if you are trying to do it solo, I can see how this quest can be very frustrating very quickly. So that's going to go into annoying. BP Depot, really not much to say here. Just run around customs, mark a few containers. Uh, I like customs. I don't find the quest that bad. It's going to go into the good tier. The Bunker Part 1. This one, I think, is a good quest. It's fine. It, you just go into the bunker, you investigate, maybe you get into a little bit of PvP, it's fine. What I hate about this quest is what it leads into, so that is gonna go into the good tier, but Bunker Part 2 is where things start to get annoying. Why? Well, now you have to run around and touch every little part of the bunker, meaning that you can't just get in and get out like you could with Bunker Part 1. Now you have to... there's a very solid chance you're gonna run into some PvP, and if you were trying to complete this quest at any point past the first week of the wipe, that means you're gonna start running into some very geared people who are trying to farm the raiders down there. So that's gonna go into the annoying tier. Where things start to get worse is with re no place for renegades. Why? Because you're just going back to the same exact place, but now this time you get to deal with the RNG dice roll that is, are the raiders gonna spawn or am I just gonna have to duke it out with a bunch of other people and they're not even gonna be here and then I'm gonna have to come back or maybe somebody else comes in and steal your raider kills. It's it's very fr- it wasn't bad before when raiders had a very consistent spawn rate, but nowadays that they're pretty sparse, it can be pretty annoying to try to get those five raider kills. So that is just annoying. And documents is- documents has a similar issue solely because I'm tired of going to the bunker by this point. You're gonna send me down there for a fourth time or you, you couldn't have just given me the list and sent me down there once. 
That would have been pretty cool proper, but otherwise all you have to do is grab some stuff down in the bunker So I'll, I'll put that into annoying solely because I'm tired of going there at this point, but it's not it's not horrendous I guess Bad rep evidence. It's just a retrieve quest. Yeah, the location of the portable bunkhouse can be a little bit annoying. Not too difficult, especially if you're willing to kind of let the uh, raid die down a bit. So that is just going to go into the good tier. Ice cream cones. This quest is completely free. There, there, there is no reason this should be slowing your progression. Why? You can craft them in the laboratory. You can get this entire quest done by not playing Escape from Tarkov. So that is going into the free XP tier. Postman Pat Part 1. I like Factory a lot, and if you're gonna ever give me a reason to go to Factory, I'll do it. It's it's a fine quest right here. All you gotta do is run to Dead Scrab, grab the letter, and then either get out or murder everyone in the Factory and have a good time. I, I find this quest to be enjoyable. Shaking Up Teller is another simple item retrieval. You just run to Dorms. I quite like Dorms PvP. That's probably my favorite place to fight people, so that, in my opinion, is a good t uh, quest. Polycom Hobo. This is another one that is free EXP solely because if you are doing customs raids or any quests on customs, this is just going to come completely naturally. You don't have to put any extra effort into it to get 25 scab kills. It, it, again, free XP. And then we have Anesthesia. Based on my historic rants, people are probably going to expect me to hate this quest. I find it to be perfectly fine. It's rigged game that I despise, but we'll get to that later. So that, not much to say. Yeah, it can be a little annoying to have to mark the um, locations that are completely out in the open by pier and also by the resort. But at least you don't have to sit there for 15 seconds. So that's, that's a good quest. It's fine. Now we move on to Punisher. Punisher Part 1. Again, not much to say here. It's a good quest. You just got to kill a bunch of scavs with an AKM. Not too much of a pain in the ass. Sometimes they don't spawn, which can be can make this a little bit more tedious. But overall, it's a good quest. Punisher Part 2. Um, kill some scabs on reserve. Not a huge issue. Find some half masks. If you know about this quest in advance, you can collect half masks on the many scabs you have already killed by this point in the wipe and you'll just have them sitting in your stash. No worries, turn them in instantly. It's a good quest. Punisher Part 3, I really enjoy it. First off, I love the AKS-74U, and I love customs. And all I have to do is kill a bunch of scabs on customs. If you haven't already completed Polycom Hobo, just by doing this quest, you will get two of those done. So, uh, Punisher Part 3 is an enjoyable quest. I think it's a really, really fun one. Punisher Part 4, however, is going to be the first quest that goes into the Belt Sander Treadmill category. I, I hate Lighthouse. If a quest is going to send me to Lighthouse, odds are it's going to get ranked pretty low. If I have to do PvP on Lighthouse, I hate you. Actually, that, wh why was this change made? Also, you have to get shotgun kills on one of the most open maps in the game. Thankfully, it's just on scavs, but still, this... I do not like this quest. This thing is... it's terrible. Stay away from me. I'm glad I don't have to do you. Uh, Punisher Part 5. I enjoy running around with the pack. I find it to be quite a fun thing to do. You get ultra lightweight. Yeah, it's a bit riskier, but hey, that, that can be a little bit fun. I'm not going to say it's enjoyable because if you're just getting uh, stuffed by scabs and stuff like that, that can be really annoying, but I think it is a good quest overall. Punisher Part 6. You get to use the SVD. The SVD is an absolute powerhouse of a weapon. It is a fun thing to use, and therefore the quest is enjoyable. And after having a good time, you get to go back to Lighthouse with Reconnaissance. Reconnaissance isn't... It's not terrible, but it's on Lighthouse, and genuinely, I would rather be doing homework, so that's gonna go down there. Easy Job Part 1 is thankfully a little bit better all you have to do is run to the center and throw a marker on a helicopter but still it's lighthouse i have to make the journey all the way over there and hope i don't get shot by somebody who's camping either of the bridges or hope that the rogues aren't i don't know ripping a line and just spraying through the walls so yeah i, I do not like lighthouse it is it's an annoying quest easy job part two sending me to the same exact place to do something that's annoying and two of the buildings where the rogues spawn where you are most likely to find enemies to kill to complete this quest don't count so yeah i don't i bleh, bad bad rather do homework uh test drive part one <sighs> they really butchered the m1a this wipe it's like really not a fun weapon to use and the sight you have to slap onto this thing isn't 
isn't great in my opinion either. So I'm gonna have to say I would rather be doing homework than trying to complete this quest. It was it was not an enjoyable time this wipe. Um, Grenadier. Grenadier is a good quest in my opinion. It forces people to learn how to use grenades and here's the thing. If you aren't trying to complete Grenadier by grabbing impacts or grabbing VOG 25s and rushing on factory, you're doing it wrong. Trust me, just use grenades often and naturally. That You think there's somebody down a hallway in dorms? Throw a grenade. You think there's somebody in a doorway? Throw a grenade. You hear gunfire in a building and you're outside? Toss a grenade through the window. There are so many opportunities to use grenades and people just don't do it until they have to try to force this quest, which makes it miserable. Just use grenades and do it naturally and you'll have a good time. Trust me, it's a good quest. Perfect mediator. You don't have to put any effort into this. You should be trying to do this anyways. Like that that's the whole point of doing the quests and progressing through the game. So the fact that you get some XP for it and a nice little weapons box is just a cherry on top of the cake. So yeah, that's free XP. Uh, Intimidator, you you just have to shoot scabs in the head, like I think 40 times, but if you're hunting scabs, that's what you should be doing anyways. So really this, this, this is just kind of free XP as well because there's no additional effort you have to put into it. And then finally we have regulated materials. Yeah, finding the tank battery and the five O of Z shells can be a little annoying. Personally, I just ran scavs on reserve throughout the wipe and I found them over time and that's how I got this one done. So it wasn't super hard, but it is one that you are just gonna kind of have to complete through brute forcing it with a ton of runs. So that is going to go into the thug it out category. And now we are going to move on over to Therapist. Now wait a minute, Levi, I hear you ask. You didn't cover a lot of quests from Proper, and that's because I kind of lied when I uh, named this video. Yeah, I'm not covering literally every single quest in Escape from Tarkov, because holy hell, there are a lot of these things. If I were to cover literally every single quest in Escape from Tarkov, I would have to skip meals just to get this video done. Or would I? I'm in a college dorm right now, meaning that meal prep options are very limited. We're not even allowed to have a rice cooker. Enter Factor, a meal delivery service that provides quality pre-cooked meals at your convenience. Factor is perfect for the busy person and the Tarkov goblin alike. No long prep, no annoying cleanup, just toss it in the oven or microwave and in a few minutes you have a delicious meal. Even better, Factor can be adjusted to fit your lifestyle. Their large menu features all different types of meals perfect for whatever diet you're on, whether it's keto, you're vegan, or if you just desire the protein. You decide how many meals are delivered each week, you can skip a week if you need to, it's all about flexibility, and it's all up to you. Ultimately, Factor is the combination of nutritious meals with the convenience of fast food. If you don't have time to make your own meals, then this is a far superior option to the garbage you're gonna get at a fast food chain. Get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life using my link below. That means you can choose two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order you get while you are an active subscriber. All of this can be found with the link below or simply scan this QR code here. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the suffering. Uh, so yeah, moving on to therapist. First of all, I'm going to mention Postman Pat part two. Th this, is, this, this is not a quest. This is a continuation of Postman Pat part one. You run into factory, grab a letter off of the scab, of the dead scab, and leave, and that completes Proper's quest, and then all you have to do is turn in the letter to Therapist. There's there's literally nothing you have to do. It's, it's, it's completely free. It's going into the free XP category. First in line is a pretty simple quest. Just loot three medical items and find a certain location on Ground Zero. It's right by an extract as well, so that is going to go into the good category. Not, not too hard to do. Shortage. Shortage is one of those quests that you either get done instantly or you have a hell of a time trying to complete. It's one you just got a brute force. Finding those Salewas isn't typically difficult unless you're trying to do this quest, so that can be annoying. It's one you're just gonna have to kind of run repeatedly. Just thug it out. Um, that's gonna go there. Uh, Operation Aquarius part one, just run to dorms 206 and leave. It's really not a difficult quest and I don't even think you have to live uh, that raid after you unlock it. You have to survive another customs raid, but not that one specifically. So yeah, that's that's a good quest. Operation Aquarius part two, just kill scavs on customs. It's not hard. Um, 
I, I would say it's enjoyable because I really like customs. So yeah, that's going there. Back to the quest you just have to thug out, Sanitary Standards Part 1 and Part 2. Yeah, they're... The gas analyzer is a very elusive item uh, in the very beginning of the wipe, so... Uh, yeah, it, it can be annoying, but just keep trying. You'll find them eventually. I believe in you. Uh, Painkiller. Morphines are pretty much everywhere. If you just check med spawns, you are going to find four of them super, super quickly, and... If you are checking those med spawns from the beginning of the wipe, by the time you get this quest, you'll already have them stockpiled in your stash. So that is just some free experience. Uh, pharmacist. This quest isn't particularly bad. Finding dorm room 114 can be a bit of a struggle, and they are very, very expensive keys at the beginning of the wipe. Um, but the quest itself isn't bad. It's, it's very simple. Again, just go grab the item from the room, and there's a safe in there as well. So it, there, it's not like you're wasting money on a key just for a quest. You can get a little bit of a return on that investment. That is a good quest. Car repair is either free experience or you gotta thug it out. It all depends on how much money you have and how lucky you are with finding car batteries and spark plugs. Mostly spark plugs, because if you're really desperate, you can just craft the car batteries if you're willing to pay quite a bit. So... I don't really know where to put that one. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the thug it out category. I think that's appropriate. Disease history is another one of those quests that very much depends on how much money you have. Getting those two keys, especially at the beginning of the wipe, is going to cost you a lot. And they, they're, unfortunately, they're not great from a loot perspective. They're slightly better nowadays, but they're not nearly as good as they once were. So it is a bit of a money sink, which can be frustrating. But again, the quest itself isn't difficult it's it's a good quest and seaside vacation you're making me go to lighthouse i i know i sound like a broken record but i hate that map it is so how is it so awful it's kind of impressive if i'm being honest but yeah i'd rather be doing homework than seaside vacation supply plans is just another fetch quest go grab the item from the uh portable cabins on woods Running to the center of the sawmill can be a little bit annoying, especially when everyone's looking around with their sniper rifles, but it, it, it's it's a pretty easy quest to get done. It's it's good. Colleagues Part 1 kind of branches into the... You just gotta kind of thug it out. You just gotta work through these quests. Um, thankfully, it is in the exact same locations as Anesthesia, so you can get those quests done together. Colleagues Part 2 is another one, you, you just gotta work through it, it's going into Thug It Out as well, uh, and it's also kind of a money sink, because the cottage back door key in order to get the Ophthalmoscope is really, really expensive, so either try to find a buddy who has the key, or just pray to Nikita that you find one. This is one that is probably gonna surprise some people, Colleagues Part 3. I think that this one is pretty close to free experience for a few reasons, now hang on. You need to find 10 lab key cards, and you need to find two decently rare injectors. In my experience, the two injectors were much harder to find than the key cards solely because I managed to grind max fence rep. Therefore, my scavs were spawning with key cards pretty damn often. I was able to stockpile them very quickly, and even, even if you don't grind out all the way to tier 6 rep, you can still grind out to like tier 3 rep very, very easily. It's not even that difficult if you know what you're doing with hitting car extracts and stuff like that and you'll be able to rack up 10 key cards a lot quicker than you think so that's pretty solid the injectors you just kind of have to get lucky with so if you find a 3btg or an ahf1 be sure you hold on to them because the reward for this quest is a black key card and you can sell that for four and a half mil if you stockpile that stuff and you get this quest, this is definitely the way to go. I'm going to put it into free experience because of that. Healthcare Privacy Part 1. It's a good quest. Pretty easy. All you got to do is mark the ambulances. Um, and two of them are right next to each other at the tunnel. The other one's up at the resort, which, eh, again, can be a little bit of a daunting place to run out and drop something. But it's, it's not that difficult. You shouldn't have a hard time with this. It's a good quest. Healthcare Privacy Part 2. Um, you are gonna have to duke it out in the resort a little bit, but that can be fun, and again, it shouldn't take you all that long. This is another solid good quest. 
Healthcare Privacy Part 3, very, very easy. Again, another good quest. You just have to collect the blood sample on Woods, and Woods is a pretty easy map to navigate without running into people. So, Healthcare Privacy Part 4, completely free. Re I think it, you have to reach a health skill of 4. By this point in the quest tree, you almost certainly have that. And if you don't, you can pay 400,000 rubles to get two levels without doing anything. It, it is <laughs> very free, very easy quest. Healthcare Privacy Part 5, I personally really enjoy because I think it's really fun to fight people in Nighttime Factory. That being said, if you're just trying to get this quest done or if you're a solo, this can be a very frustrating quest to do, especially since you have to sit there and plant three objects 30 seconds each. I don't know why it takes that long. I think they should either have the time or just make it so you plant all three in 30 seconds. That would be pretty cool. But for me personally, I enjoy this quest a lot. And then we have Athlete. Again, you just have to reach a health skill level of 10. Very easy to do. Doesn't take much effort. There, you can't even really put effort into this. This is just something that's going to happen. So that's free experience. I forgot to rank General Wares, but in my opinion, if you can craft stuff in a hideout and then turn it in, that's pretty much just free experience. There's no effort in that. So that is also going up there. Private Clinic is another complete dice roll quest that is based entirely on luck. It's, did you find a Lead X in Raid or did you not? That's pretty much it. So, I can't really rank it high, but it's not bad. It, we'll, we'll put it in Thug It Out, solely because in, unless you want to just hope for the random chance that you find a Lead X in a med crate, you're going to be rushing Lead X spawns probably for a decent bit. Lost Contact. It is Colleagues Part 1, except on Lighthouse, and I hate Lighthouse, so that is going into Annoying. Drug Trafficking. Back to Lighthouse with you to plant a camera in a random back corner of the water treatment plant. God, I hate this map. It's going into Annoying. Uh, decontamination Service. You just gotta kill a ton of scavs on Interchange while wearing a specific mask. Uh, thankfully, you can wear the respirator, which doesn't prevent you from wearing a headset or a helmet, so really not a difficult quest to complete. I find it enjoyable. Uh, crisis. Find a lot of lead X's and defibrillators. Uh, this, this quest, most people don't have to do this quest, um, but it's still an annoying thing to try. But starting us off is Burning Rubber, where you, you just use a car extract on Ground Zero. It's, it's free experience. There's not much effort in this. Then there's Supplier, find two Tazes, find two Module 3M armors. Not too difficult, it's a good quest. Stirrup. I really enjoy Stirrup. The pistols feel really good to use this wipe, and that has made this quest incredibly fun, especially in the early wipe, when everyone's just on factory, running around with pistols, you can have a really, really fun time. Or if you're just carrying a pistol as a secondary, you can complete this quest naturally. So, yeah. I, I like this one. It's enjoyable. Um, the Extortionist, it can be a little tedious when you run to the unknown body and the key is not there, so you can't complete the quest. But otherwise, it, there's not much to it. It's just a simple fetch quest. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, what's on the flash drive? <sighs> This is the quest that breaks many a Tarkov player. When you are playing this game and you cannot, for the life of you, find those flash drives, it is an insanely frustrating thing. Or you get lucky and you find two of them instantly, like what happened to me. So, yeah, that's that's an annoying quest, uh, quite often, for many people. Golden Swag is just a slightly more complicated um, fetch quest. You just gotta run to dorms and grab the Golden Zibbo. And if you spawn on the right side, you can plant it before you extract, so it's it's a good quest. Uh, chemical part one, again, if you spawn on the right side, you can retrieve the, uh, the document from the train car right before you extract at ZB11, uh, so it's, it's a good quest. Chemical part two, run to dorms, grab two items, leave. Good quest. Uh, chemical part three, you get to go into Factory again, and I really, really like Factory, so I find this quest enjoyable. Again, you're just grabbing something, but I get to have a little bit of fun PvP on the way out. And then Chemical Part 4, you're just marking something on Customs, and if you're trying to get this quest done, there's a very solid chance you literally spawn right in front of your objective. So, that's bordering on the free experience, but we're gonna put it into good. Now we're getting into the spicier stuff, we have Safe Corridor. 
I have made my hatred of this quest very, very clear. I do not like sitting in a corner hoping that something is either going to spawn or run in. So, yeah, I'd, I'd rather do homework. Hell, I could probably do homework while I'm trying to get this quest done. It'd be a better use of my time. Rigged game. I also hate this one. You're doing the exact same thing as you did in anesthesia, except sitting in the open for 15 seconds, putting a thing in a container. I, I hate this quest. It's, it's annoying as hell. Uh, vitamins part one. Good quest. Uh, retrieving the item that is in Mantis in Interchange can get a little bit spicy because that is a PvP hot zone, but I find that fun. The other two are quite easy to find without running into many people. It's, it's just a good quest. Vitamins part two, just hand in four respirators and three medical blood sets. Pretty easy if you stockpile them, that's free experience. Friend from the West part one, this one kind of borders on free experience, but if you are a PvP averse person, you are gonna have to change your playstyle to get this done, so I'm not gonna put it up there. But killing seven Usex, I mean, you're just playing Tarkov at that point, so good quest. Informed means armed. Uh, this is this is an annoying quest. Some of the locations where you plant the camera, not so hard. The one on customs, you're you've got a decent amount of cover there. But on woods and on interchange, you're kind of just sitting out in the open and praying to whatever higher higher power you believe in that you don't eat a headshot while you're putting this thing down. So, yeah, that 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 can be annoying. Lend lease part one. Just retrieve some items. So again, they can be out in the open, which is annoying, but you don't have to sit there, so just grab it and run. I think it's a good quest overall. That being said, the box on Shoreline that is over by the weather station and radio tower, I have oh I always have the hardest time finding that thing. They moved it this wipe, and we were searching, my buddies and I were searching for probably a solid like 10 minutes just in the open looking for this thing and we finally found it but yeah that that's the only frustrating part of this quest otherwise it's good then we have set up and i'm certain a lot of people want me to put this thing into the belt sander treadmill but i don't think it deserves that it's if you are trying to force it it can definitely very quickly become a belt sander treadmill but if you play your raids naturally and you play smart then it's not so bad. Chumming, I think, is a pretty solid quest. Planting all of the gold chains is kind of stupid, in my opinion. It keeps this quest from going into the enjoyable category, but I think fighting it out with people on nighttime interchange is a pretty fun thing to do, so long as you don't run into hackers. So that is going to be a good quest. Bullshit is... Uh, it's kind of bullshit, uh, especially if you're solo. I can see how this one is very frustrating, especially since scavs are spawning in dorms like absolute crazy right now. When I was doing this quest, my partner who was protecting me had to kill 19 scavs in dorms. That was it. He had 27 scav kills by the end of the raid. I'm not sure if the game tags and curses you if you pick up that damn USB, which would be really, really... <laughs> kind of funny, but in a really assholey way. But yeah, so if you're solo, that can be very frustrating. Long road. I hate this quest. Why are you making me stand still? Hoping that an enemy spawns on a big open road in front of me. This is stupid. I hate you. Uh, yeah, belt sander treadmill. Missing cargo. Not a difficult quest, but it's on lighthouse. So I hate it. It's annoying. And then Flint is another one of those ones where you uh, level a skill, this time it's stress resistance. It's just gonna happen, so that's that's free experience. I'm realizing now I forgot to mention Friend from the West Part 2. Um, it's not a difficult quest, but it is a stupid quest, so I'm gonna label it as annoying, because why, again, why am I paying you to work for you? This is dumb. Then moving over to Peacekeeper, first we have Fishing Gear, and Fishing Gear can be annoying because, again, you are standing in the open. Head down, waiting to get your head lopped off while you hide this SV-98 multi-tool in this boat. So, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it, it's just annoying to do. Tiger Safari, however, is in my opinion a pretty enjoyable quest because you're just running around customs. Customs is my favorite map. It's going up there. Scrap metal, you're just marking the tanks on shoreline. Not much to say here, it's a good quest. Revision Reserve. The revision quests in general tend to be pretty annoying because they have you running all over the map looking for stuff. Doing it all in one raid can be difficult, so doing it in multiple raids tends to be how it happens anyways, so you're just gonna have to thug it out. 
Eagle Eye is another one. It comes immediately after Scrap Metal and it starts to build to the Shoreline grind where all you are running is Shoreline and it can get pretty tiring. So that is gonna go into the Thug It Out tier. Same exact logic for uh, the Cult Part 1 on its own. It's not difficult, but we're starting to run Shoreline a lot and not very much interesting things are happening. So we're just kind of playing Running Simulator. Uh, the cult part two can be annoying solely because you got to run all over the place to hit the mark circles on woods and also uh, You are going to have to spend a pretty mighty sum of money in order to get the dorm marked room. So Yeah, that that can be annoying Overpopulation I'm going back to lighthouse and I'm losing my will to live that is annoying humanitarian supplies uh, you do have to wear the UN armor which kind of sucks because it's not fantastic and it does not help with your camouflage but otherwise you just have to kill some scavs using an m4 it's 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 a fine quest it's good uh, i'm not going to talk too much about spa tour solely because i'd be repeating myself a lot but spa tours part one two four and five are all going to go in the good category Spa Tour Part 3 is just free experience. You can craft all the stuff you need to turn in. Spa Tour Part 6 is another stupid money sink quest where you have to pay someone to help them, so that's gonna go into annoying. And then Spa Tour Part 7 is another quest uh, where if you've been stockpiling the items because you know you're gonna need them, then it's free experience. If you haven't been stockpiling them and you now need to go find all of them, then it can be annoying. A revision lighthouse, uh, the exact same as revision reserve, except you have to run all over a bigger map, and this time the map has no redeeming qualities and sucks completely. So yeah, that's gonna go into rather do homework verges on belt sander treadmill. Samples is a quest that is going to take a very, very long time, but it is kind of free experience because if you just find everything over time, you'll get it done eventually without putting too much work into it. So that's, I guess we'll put it into free experience. And then we have most of Cargo X and most of Wet Job. Um, yeah, the, all of these are going into the Thug It Out category because this is the true shoreline grind. Almost every single one of these are on shoreline and many of them have you go into the exact same place to do something, which gets very tiring very quickly. On their own, they're not hard quests, they're not painful, but fuck, dude, I don't want to go back to shoreline. Please send me somewhere else. If they broke these up so they weren't all in line with each other, it wouldn't be nearly as miserable. So yeah, combined they go into like annoying, but each quest on their own, they're all gonna go into thug it out. Insomnia, I like fighting at night and all you have to do is hunt PMCs. So it's, it's a fun PVP night quest. That is an enjoyable quest. I completely forgot about Cargo X part four. Uh, you have to go to Lighthouse. Need I say any more? It's annoying. Uh, Lendley's Part 2 is definitely more annoying nowadays solely because these items are very, very hard to come by. That is the Vertex and the uh, military uh, radio thingy. They're pretty hard to come by, um, at least in my experience. Peacekeeping Mission, very similar story to Humanitarian Supplies. You just gotta kill thing, a uh, bunch of scavs all over the place while wearing uh, the Untar armor, and I'm pretty sure you have to use an M4 at the same time, which beyond me how that is solid peacekeeping but again hey at least they're doing something so i, th I think that's a good quest a terror group employee you have to use a pretty damn expensive key in order to open sanitar's room on labs and then you have to get out with the uh the flash drive so <sighs> it's not a terribly difficult quest but you have to survive on labs which means a dice roll on if you're gonna get murdered by a raider that had a really lucky grenade, a player who's just really freaking good, or a funny little guy who downloaded some third-party software. So yeah, that's, I'd, I'd probably rather be doing homework. And then we have the guide. In order to finish the guide quickly, you have to become the rattiest rat known to man. And because of that, it can be a belt sander treadmill just trying not to die once and getting out of every single map in the game. So, yeah, that's a tough one. Heading on over to Mechanic, we have Saving the Mole. Saving the Mole is a solid Ground Zero quest that I don't have any issues with. You just grab the key, head upstairs, and then you leave the map pretty quickly because the map is decently small. So, 
nothing too notable. I think it's a good quest. Then I'm going to list Gunsmith. Literally every single one of them is going into free XP because let's be real, there, there isn't much effort put into these things. You just go on the wiki, find out what you need to build, buy it all, figure out why it's not working, and then you realize you have to take out the magazine and bada bing bada boom, quest complete. It's, it's no effort to it. The Acquaintance, I actually really like this quest because of the amount of early game uh, PvP you can get on wood specifically in that location when everyone's trying to do it. So yeah, I think it's a fun quest. Farming part one, this is one that entirely depends on if you have a group of people that can protect you while you are uh, repairing the lights in factory. If you're doing it solo, you're gonna have to thug it out. It's probably gonna be rough. Farming part two, again, pretty free. You're just getting T-shaped plugs and power cords. It's, <laughs> it's not difficult. Farming part three, go to a location on customs, grab the box of graphics cards. It, it kind of pains me that we're not allowed to like hold on to a box full of graphics cards when each of them are selling for like a million rubles, but you know, whatever. So that that's, it's a fine quest. It's just a fetch quest. It's, it's good. Uh, farming part four, <sighs> I'm not sure where to put this one because the reward is pretty damn good nowadays. It's very, very solid. The Bitcoins are worth a lot, especially this wipe. However, you do have to find three graphics cards. So, uh, not to mention eight computer fans. So I'll put this one into thug it out solely because of the sheer repetition that you are going to have to do in order to try to intentionally find graphics cards or you're just gonna get lucky. Bad habit, you just gotta find 15 packs of cigarettes, and if you've been stockpiling them since the beginning of the wipe, it's it's free experience, no effort. Broadcast part one, you're going to Lighthouse, and I'm not happy about it. That is, I, I'd rather be doing homework. A shooter born in heaven, headshot kills with bolt actions. It's very easy on some maps, and annoyingly difficult on others, unless you want to try to uh, get in a close range PvP with bolt action weapons, which I mean if you're really really good can be pretty easy But for most of us is a rough time. So all that to say you're just gonna have to thug it out Corporate secrets. You're going to lighthouse again. whoop de doo It sucks um, Insider free experience. You just reach loyalty level 3 with Propor. Is there any effort into this quest whatsoever? No signal part one just gotta run past the weather station on shoreline. Uh, the mad dash to the top of, I'm pretty sure it's West Wing, can be a bit daunting, but otherwise I, th I think it's just a good quest. Signal part two, again, pretty free. Just, just turning in items you will find naturally, or I'm pretty sure you can craft broken G-phones as well, so even freer. Signal part three can be a little annoying, solely because you're going to the exact same locations you went in signal part one, but this time you're putting a jamming device down. Signal part four, reach a memory skill of level four. That is, that is completely free experience. There is no effort there. Scout, uh, the scout one, again, you're just running around factory. You don't even have to buy the key to go into the extracts. You just have to touch the extract doors. So any excuse to play on factory is all right with me. I enjoy this quest. I'm having a good time. Back door, very simple. Just run to the uh, D2 extract on reserve. Don't run into exit campers. That can be annoying. Otherwise, good quest. Surplus goods. You're just going to a location that you've been before. I'm pretty sure this is located in RBST and picking up a package and then leaving. Good quest. You can, you can even dive out the manhole that's right next to you if you really want to get out. Energy crisis. Ha <laughs> ha. Lighthouse. Again. Someone please end my suffering. It's going into the bad tiers. Fertilizers. You can literally craft every single item you need to turn in here. There, there, I, there are very few quests that are freer than this one. Import, you have to turn in a UHF RFID reader and a VPX flash storage module. This one is very easy because you get both of these items from other quests that you have already completed. So if you held on to them, for re-experience. Chemistry closet, um, you just have to open blue tape room on Shoreline. Not much to say here. Solid quest, I guess. Psycho sniper. I don't like this quest. Why? Because you need a sniper skill level of 10 in order to turn the quest in. And if you get the five kills without dying before you do that, well, doesn't matter. If you die, you're still you're still gonna lose that progress. You still fail the quest, which in my opinion is really, really stupid. But also, 
in order to get your sniper skill level that high, odds are you're gonna have to complete Tarkov Shooter Part 8 and a Shooter Born in Heaven. So, you already have done so much with the snipers, now you gotta do it again, and it's, it's just, it's just kinda tiring. Well, I apologize for a bit of an abrupt ending, however, this video has already gotten very, very long, and if I were to include everything I wanted to say about not so much Ragman, but particularly about Jaeger's quests, then this video would be getting a whole lot longer. Um, so I'm going to save those and make a part two that will be going up hopefully this Sunday, so you can check that out if you want to. Um, also, here are all the tier lists for the people who just decided to skip to the end and don't have time to hear me yap for 40 minutes. I completely understand. Uh, once again, shout out to Factor for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out using my link below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, especially all the way to the end. That really does mean so, so much to me. And I hope you enjoyed.